Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday, August 31st, 2018, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. Hope everyone's doing well. I have a couple of devotionals for you today, but first, as always, I would like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this day and all my blessings. I love you very much. I want to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, this is called Works of Darkness. And the reading is from Ephesians 5.11. And it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Have you ever known Christians who adopt worldly standards to attract friends? Popularity ranks high on their list of priorities than bringing people to the Savior. Some try to combine questionable or blatantly sinful activities with some form of religion with the excuse that it's their way of reaching people for Christ. This hinders their witness, and the unsaved still don't trust Christ. Paul calls this, quotes, fellowship in the unfruitful works of darkness, unquote. He says we must have no part of it, making people comfortable in their sin is nothing more than facilitating their rejection of Christ. No favors are done by encouraging any sinful lifestyle. All that does is to make people comfortable on their way to eternity separated from God. There is just no fellowship between godliness and worldliness. The two don't mix. It's like oil and water. You can't blend them. They repel each other. God calls us to avoid the darkness in the world. Jesus asks us to uh, reach out to others in his name through prayer and God's words, not by lowering our standards. So basically, if you have a group of friends who are very, very worldly and um, you have a better chance of sinking down to their level than they would coming up to yours. And our Lord says to walk away and don't have any part of them. Uh, remove yourself from s such circles of friends because it's only going to um, blemish you. Okay, uh, you. I always find myself when I start to socialize, I start to um, notice things that maybe slip out of my mouth and then I, I catch it right away or I start uh, chiming in with somebody in some ridiculous folly and um, I see that the the drive to go into that um, that realm is very very powerful and um, you can't become a good uh, um, reputable witness for the Lord if you're doing exactly what they're doing. So you just need to remove yourself from it. A prayer we can say is, Father, help me to base my standards on your word and not let the world infiltrate my life. Uh, and a quote is, uh, you are called not to be successful or to meet any of the other counterfeit standards of this world but to be faithful and to be expended in the cause of serving the risen and returning Christ. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And this one's called Keeping a Clean Heart. And the reading is from 2 Corinthians 7, 1. And it says, Beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Her new home had white ceramic tile floors throughout. Friends and family often asked, quotes, won't they show every speck of dirt? Unquote. Yes, but at least I can tell if I need to clean them, replied the new homeowner. So how often do you have to clean them? Once a week, her friends asked. She says, more like every day, she replied, laughing um, at their horrified faces. Keeping a clean heart requires similar diligence and regular upkeep. While Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness, we need to be on the lookout for temptations and situations that may cause us to fall into sin. It's everywhere, people. It's all around. Uh, you, if, if, you're, if you're isolated and all of a sudden you go out and you're socializing and people are cussing, you'll find yourself slipping out with some cuss words. And you can see right there where, you know, at, once you've been away from it and absent from it from a long, for a long time, and then you go back out there and you start to mingle with the world, you see that the whole intent and purpose is to just suck you in to that drain pipe. Reading the Bible reminds us that God expects us to strive for holiness. Striving for holiness means your will, your intention is that you want to be like Jesus. A lot of people will say that you, you, you're going to work for your salvation. No, that's not working for you. Striving to be like Jesus is not the same as working to be saved. You can't work yourself into salvation. Only Jesus can save you, but you can strive to be like him. Um, as we pray daily, God shows us areas in our character or behaviors that displease him. That is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, convicting you of things that need to be changed. Like the homeowner who enjoyed knowing her floors were clean, there is joy and peace knowing that our hearts can be clean too. Yeah, after you speak to the Father in your prayer closet and you uh, discuss the areas in your life that you're not happy with and you give them to Him, and um, you ask him to cleanse you from them, you walk away um, feeling refreshed, like you had a spiritual shower. That's what our Lord does for you. And um, in Psalm 51.10, a prayer we can say is, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And a quote says, are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? I've always said that the cleansing, the blood of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a perpetual shower. And you need to go into that shower and talk to our Lord in a personal relationship with him so that you can have this renewal all the time. And... Um, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, um, today is the day of salvation, my friends. Um, you cannot enter heaven unless you accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and um, come to him and repent and um, give your life to him because no one comes to the Father unless it's through the Son. If you don't do this, you're going to be left behind here when things get really, really ugly and tribulation falls. And um, I know there are some people out there who uh, think this is um, 
some kind of concocted fairy tale, but believe you me, it isn't. When you're left here in it, you're going to be saying, I wish I had listened. And uh, you can avoid all that by uh, giving your life to Jesus right now. I'm going to put up the salvation prayer right behind this video. And, um, you know, people, we're all sinners. But the blood of Jesus Christ, he's the final sacrifice for our sins. There is no more sacrifice. Okay? You can't make yourself good enough to get into heaven, no matter what you do. And if you don't do that, you're serving Satan. And if you're serving Satan, you're doomed for hell. So there really isn't a lot of choice here. And as you can see, by all the destruction that's happening around the world, and all the hatred that's rising up, and the division between people and even the body of Christ, you can see things are accelerating here. You'd have to be a fool not to see that. So, um, you know, if you're hurting now from depression, from a broken marriage, from an addiction, just from being wounded from a horrible, horrific childhood, no matter what your problems are, our Lord and Savior can heal you and fix you. Okay? He's the creator of all things. He's our physician. He's our comforter. He's our shrink. He listens to us 24-7. He can hear all your thoughts. And when you come to him, he'll hear your prayer. So come to our Lord. Follow along. Don't click off. I just want to remind you that I love you. And <laughs> Jesus loves you. Never forget how much he loves you. He loves you very much. And um, he wants you. He wants you. Yeah, you. So follow along and give your heart to Jesus. And you'll have eternal life. God bless you.